Creation leads on to inheritance. Inheritance is the passing on of genetic characteristics from one generation to the next. This was first investigated in the 19th century by Gregor Mendel. As you watch the next clips, make a note of how characteristics are passed on. Mendel was a monk, later abbot, of the Augustinian monastery in Brun, a thriving provincial town in what was then a part of the Austrian Empire. Between 1856 and 1863, he raised nearly 30,000 plants, crossing varieties that demonstrated clearly identifiable characteristics, all the while counting the number of times each characteristic appeared in succeeding generations. What Mendel observed is, for example, if you cross a pink and a white flowered pea plant, then all the offspring in the next generation are pink. So what had happened to the white? And that was the mystery that he started with. Now what happens if we cross two pinks in this generation? Well, that's when the famous ratios pop out in the next generation. You get three pinks and one white. Now why is that the case? And Mendel was able to be clear that somehow the white had been masked in the middle generation, but it was still there ready to pop out at the end. And this is what we would now call the pink being dominant, the white being recessive. The essence of Mendel's idea is that inheritance is based not on fluids, but on particles. And of course he worked on peas. He worked, for example, on round or wrinkled peas. His amazing breakthrough, really, was to find that it seems simple, that when you cross a round with a wrinkled pea, you don't get a pea that's partly wrinkled, you get a pea that's round. Um, that pea, if you uh, make those, those peas together, then you, in the next generation, get the wrinkled peas back again, quite unchanged. So that inheritance is a matter of separate units that are passed down the generations, quite distinct from that which they produce. Mendel had uncovered a crucial aspect of inheritance, the fact that somehow an individual's characteristics, the color of hair or eye, for example, are passed on through the generations, sometimes showing themselves in a particular individual, sometimes not to be seen again for several generations to come. It's the same with breeding dogs. Every characteristic in a dog is controlled by a pair of genes, one from the mother, and one from the father. Often the gene from both parents is the same. Two genes for short hair will make a short haired puppy. And two genes for long hair will make a long haired puppy. There's no conflict. But when the genes are different, a system comes into play to work out whether the long or the short hair gene will set the hair length. Some genes are stronger than others. They're called dominant genes, and the weak ones are called recessive. Dominant genes tend to hide the effect of recessive genes, sometimes hiding them completely. So if the gene for long hair is completely dominant, a puppy will have long hair, whether it inherits the long hair gene from either one of its parents or from both. The only way it can have short hair is to inherit a short hair gene from its father and a short hair gene from its mother. This means that the effect of recessive genes is often covered up. But the recessive genes are still there and they're passed on from one generation to the next. With genes for every characteristic of an animal, thousands of pairs of genes are matched up when a baby animal forms. The end result is a complex mix of characteristics from the mother and characteristics from the father. We saw that genes are responsible for characteristics inherited from parents. Genes can be dominant, which means that characteristic is more likely to be apparent, or recessive, which means that characteristic is less likely to be apparent because it is masked by a dominant gene, although it may appear in later generations. There's more about inheritance in the Higher Tier Signs program.